Welcome back to another episode of Where I Long to Be, a magical trip report podcast. My name is Virginia, and I am your host. Before we get started, I wanted to remind everyone that I have a new website for the podcast that I would love for you to check out. It's wherealongtobepodcast.com. And there you can see all of the guests I have had on the podcast since the very beginning. You can search for episodes using keywords to find trip reports of people staying at a specific resort that you're interested in or going to a specific party, or even if you want to look for a solo trip episode or a girls trip episode, take a look at the site. Let me know what you think. Okay, on with today's episode. Featuring my friend Krista from Canucks Who Disney. Without further ado, here's Krista. Listeners, I have a very special guest with me today. Welcome, Krista. How are you, Krista? I'm doing so good, and I'm very excited to talk all things Disney with you today. And Krista, you and I know each other through Instagram, and we've actually met in person before. We have. That was so fun. And I'm excited to see you again. It was so nice to meet you back in March. So it's nice to chat again. Yes. Krista was part of the big group meetup here in New York City. So I met uh, her. I met her husband, Phil, along with other friends. So many friends. I know. It was so much fun. Um, But Krista, why don't you tell us uh, what your handle is or handles, I should say, because you got a second handle recently. (laughs) And yeah. um, and a little bit about your Disney history, your account. Um, just give us all the 411. Okay, yeah. Um, so as you said, I, I have two. Um, so Canucks who Disney. Canucks fun play on Canadians. We are from Ottawa and here in Canada. So Canucks who Disney is my main account. Instagram is not a fan of me and they keep throwing me in jail. So I did create a backup <laughs> account, Canucks That Disney. Um, so very similar, but I it, I just surpassed my my two year mark, uh, Canucks to Disney. I started in July a couple of years ago, just kind of as a fun way, again, like so many do, to showcase some of my Disney memories, to talk all things Disney without annoying the friends and family on my, you know, my, my personal pages that mm-hmm. just constantly gets Disney-fied. Um, so that's why I created the account, just to share those memories. And as you alluded to, have met so many fantastic people along the way, have shared those memories with them. They've shared theirs. We've, you know, exchanged tips and tricks. And it's just been so amazing, um, this this journey that I've been on, having started this page. And in, in terms of, you know, the 411 on the love for Disney, that I went once as a kid. I vaguely remember it. I was 12. Um, I have a memory of spinning on the teacups. It's the one thing that stands out. Um, But otherwise, really started (laughs) going. A good memory? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Unlike now, the teacups are a hard pass. But uh, I really started going when I was an adult, when Phil and I started dating many years ago. Um, We went on a trip and he says, you know, as soon as he walked in, he felt that magic and he knew he was coming back and that's where he was going to propose. And sure enough, we did the next trip. He proposed like so many others in front of the castle uh, during the fireworks. So that kind of spurred the the love of Disney even more. And obviously, I've always been a fan of the movies and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So that kind of started the the whole love of Disney. Did our honeymoon in Paris, went to Disneyland Paris and uh, been going back ever, ever since. And it just keeps, you know, started as a once a year thing and evolved to way too many times a year. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, coming from Canada and coming as many times as you do, do you have like a preferred airline? Like what is your what's your method of getting the best deals for flights? Yeah. That's that's tricky and it's so up and down and in Canada there's really kind of a monopoly in terms of the airlines. Um recently there's uh another airline called Porter that started flying to Orlando out of Ottawa, where I live. Mm-hmm. And they had a lot of um, sales as they were getting started up, which were fantastic. So, you know, I had to take advantage mm-hmm. um, and come a little bit more. But they've been really great. Um, it's a quick, it's just shy of three hours to fly down from Ottawa to Disney World. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit tougher to get across to land. But um, yeah, so that's been great. I know others that drive. I, you know, it's, I think, a 22, 23 hour drive. I, I couldn't do that personally, let alone with uh, with a couple kids in the car. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we we fly down 
Um, and in terms of sales, sometimes I'll try and get a Black Friday, a Cyber Monday deal, depending on the time of year. Mm-hmm. I use Google Flights to track. I toggle and track certain flights. And then Costco now has gift, gift cards for um, some of the airlines here. So I will combine it with that and then justify all my trips that way. So I mean, it, <laughs> it, we all find ways to justify our trips. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you you and Phil have uh, some beautiful children. What are their ages? And are you beholden to their school schedule in the same way that many of us are here in the US? Or is it a little easier in Canada to do things for family vacations during school school time? Um, I don't know that it's easier, but we've got, uh, there's, there's quite a gap. So we have Jack, who's 15, and Max, who's turning seven tomorrow. So there's, there's quite a gap. Max, seven-year-old, grade one, going into grade two, don't mind missing school that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, when we started our annual trips, it was typically January or February to escape the winter. Fine when the kids are younger. Now a 15-year-old in 10th grade, I don't want to take him out uh, it, it's more important for him to stay in school. So we try and go the last couple of weeks of August because um, the kids here don't start back to school until the second week in September. So it helps hmm. with the crowds as well. Um, and we get a little bit of a summer vacation. So I will take, like I took Max last year in November on a solo trip. So I'll still take him out of school. I did still take Jack in April, but I try and do it over like a long weekend or when they they have a PD day or a day off school here so that he's not missing mm-hmm. as much. So, yeah. So this trip is Friday, August the 16th through Thursday, August the 29th. Yes. Okay. And flying out on Friday, what time of day are you flying? It's a later flight. Uh, I mean, not too, too late, but I think we leave uh, around 4.30-ish, so we are expected to arrive around 7.30. Okay. Is that typically the time of day you all travel down when you go up for a trip like this? We prefer an earlier flight. Then you have your whole day there, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but since I follow the deals, that's that's what I got. So <laughs> the last few times have been arriving in the evening, which is which is fine. Okay. Where are you going to be staying for this trip? Is it all going to be in one spot? You hopping around? How's that going to work? We are hopping around, which um, I don't know how that'll be with kids, but we are spending the first, uh, the first leg, I think the first eight nights, seven nights at Animal Kingdom Lodge um, and then hopping over to the Polynesian. Have you stayed at both of those resorts before? So we stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge for the first time in April, and we've never been to the Poly before. I love the Poly. I think it's my second favorite resort after Wilderness Lodge. (laughs) Oh, that's our home resort, and we've still never stayed there. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. Are you Copper Creek or Boulder Ridge? Copper Creek. Okay. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yep. I love it. I love it. It's just there's something about it that's just so relaxing, and I love the poly too. I just love the vibes um, there, but it is a little bit more trafficked just because it's on the monorail loop. So, right. Yeah. Um, For Animal Kingdom Lodge, are you going to be in Jumbo House or in Kidani? We are in Kidani. Okay. Animal Kingdom Lodge, I have not stayed in yet. So I am looking forward to giving that a try at some time in the next couple of years. Do you you have a goal to stay at every DVC resort? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's the new goal. We just became DVC in, uh, I guess, March. Um, so that's the goal. Got to gotta try them all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For your tickets, do you have an annual pass because of how many times you go down? Yes. Um, so prior to becoming DVC, I bought an Incredi pass last year. That was the only, that's the only pass they allow Canadians to purchase. Uh-huh. Um, so I had that pass and the family did not. Um, but now that we're DVC and we have access to the Sorcerer Pass, mm-hmm. um, they they got a pass last time. So okay. we all have annual passes. Yeah. I love having access to that pass because yeah. um, I, can't, I don't remember what the first time purchase price is, but the renewal price, if I added up the amount that I would pay in tickets for our annual February trip for just the one week, it cost me more actually 
to buy a regular oh ticket than to renew my annual pass at this point. It's it's not oh, wow. much more, but it's like it's it's yeah. so worth it. So may as well. And then the discounts, right? Just gotta buy more merch, make it worth it. I mean, I already get the discounts <laughs> through DVC, so true. I I can't really use that excuse because I would have ha- had them anyway. But yeah, true. Just uh, there's something about knowing that you can go at any time you want, even if you don't have the time to go or you can't find a good price on a flight like the knowledge that if a good flight came up I could just go which is what we what we did a week ago we just went like we decided on a Wednesday and Thursday we went oh love that it was not a good price on a flight we used miles (laughs) but but we had the ability to just kind of spontaneously go which was, was a lot of fun um all right, so this is going to be your first trip where Genie Plus has gone away. We have the new Lightning Lane multi-pass system. Are you someone who used Genie Plus prior to this? Um, I did. I'm still Team Fast Pass. I'm not going to lie. I did use Genie Plus um, because not every day and not every park. Mm-hmm. Um, I did strategize with it, but we don't like to wait in lines. I mean, who does, but Mm -hmm. we're trying to maximize the time. Um, and especially with a younger one, that's really impatient or if it's super hot out, we just, so we, we did use genie plus, um, probably two thirds of the trip I'd say on average. So Mm -hmm. been watching videos, tutorials, trying to learn, (laughs) see what's going on playing in the app. Um, and for a few minutes there, I didn't think I'd be able to use it as a Canadian. So I'm glad that they changed that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I now can access it, but yeah, we'll, we'll be using that, um, at least for a few days this trip. Okay. So you should be able to do that seven days in advance of your stay. Although Mm -hmm. with a split stay, I am imagining that you can only book a certain number of days on that first pass because you're you're hopping resorts and then another yeah. seven day window probably comes into effect. I assume so. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. That'll be a little bit to juggle. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you can do it. I have faith in you. Um, <laughs> did you <laughs> did you use a trip planner or are you a trip planner yourself? I am not. Normally I do. Um, I like to try and and kind of alternate who's helping me and, and spread the love. Mm-hmm. This time because we were staying DVC and we all had um, we all have annual passes mm-hmm. and the party nights, um, a travel advisor, I believe, can get for you, but not the annual pass discount. Ah, okay. So there was no way to have someone help me. But normally, if there is even anything that I can have somebody do, I, I like to try and do that. But mm-hmm. this time, it was just all me. What are going to be your priorities for this trip? You go so often. You, you've you probably done a lot of things. What is going to be your focus for this trip? Is, is there something special that you're going to be doing? Um, you mentioned the party. Are you going to be focusing on having more resort time? What mm-hmm. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think so. This is probably our longest trip ever. I, would, I think the longest part of this was maybe ten or eleven days. So this will be the longest trip ever. Um, and the goal was to have some more resort time. And I mm-hmm. always say that and end up at a park. But the goal <laughs> is to have some more resort time, especially being so darn hot at the end of August. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, now that we're DVC and trying these new resorts, we really want to take advantage and and take that all in. So and coming along with that means we have the extended evening hours. There's actually a DVC Moonlight Magic while we're there that we're going to try to get a spot at. Um, we've got a Halloween party. So we'll be doing a lot of things in the evening this time. I mm-hmm. uh, want to check out the new drone show at Disney Springs, maybe uh, the top of the world. Is that it? Top of the world, mm-hmm. the lounge. The villain's um, lair. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there are still a few new things that we want to try out. A lot of things in the evening, which is good for the heat. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we factored in a lot of resort time. Okay. This trip. Well, I know from my stay at Polly that the pool there is is absolutely amazing. I actually love it more than Stormalong Bay. So great one to have some pool time at. And I heard that the pools at Animal Kingdom Lodge are amazing too. Yes, we loved like Kidani Village has an amazing 
pool and splash pad area. It was Mm -hmm. so much fun last time. So we're looking forward to that. All right. Let's walk through all of your days and just kind of get a general outline so that when we talk again, we will have a map of what you planned. All right. So you're arriving on, on Friday night. Do you have any plans that first night? Probably, I'm guessing, only dinner, if anything. But yeah, I think landing around 730 by the time we get our bags and get over to the resort, um, there's not going to be much. I do have some friends going to the Halloween party that night, and I'm so tempted to uh, to buy a ticket and join them if they're still available when I get off the plane. But realistically, I think it will just be a head to the resort, get settled in, mm-hmm. um, wander around and, and unpack and relax. Are you going to be renting a car for this trip or relying on Disney transportation and things like Lyft or Uber? Yeah, so we we never do. We always rely solely on Disney transportation and then take the odd Uber or Lyft. Okay. All right. So Saturday, August the 17th, are you heading into a park? So the plan was that that was a full resort day and it still will be for Phil and the boys, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I plan to hop into Epcot because there are um, some other Instagram friends that are going to be there. So I plan on meeting up with with some of them. All right. Well, when you when you actually come back, we will talk about who you met up with, so we can make sure to tag them in the in the show notes. For sure. um, all right. What are you going to be doing at Epcot with them? I have no idea. Um, honestly, there's a, half of them I've met, half that I haven't. So I'm just really excited to um, to connect with them in real life and probably some drinking around the world is my guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some drinking and eating and just uh, visiting with everyone, which will be so nice to do in real life. There will be a festival going on there, correct? No, for the first time ever. We go Wait, when every does food August. and wine start. The, I think the day we leave, like the 29th. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You so. know what? I've talked to so many people recently that are like, this is the first time I'm going where there's not a festival. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> I'm going to so do. <laughs> um, and in some ways, I think it's really cool because you can actually just focus on Epcot and what Epcot yes. has to offer. Um, so that will that will be a lot of fun. How many people in this group do you think that there will be? Um, I think about eight or so. Okay. That's a nice big yeah. group. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Sunday, August the 18th, where are you headed? Um, the plan for Sunday is to hop into Hollywood studios okay. and no real plan. Just we have Hollywood studios written down. So okay. that's, uh, that's what we're up to that day. Are all of you big Star Wars fans? Yes. Um, I married into the Star Wars, admittedly. (laughs) Uh Uh, The kids were raised in it. So that was certainly Phil's influence. Um, But yes, all big Star Wars fans. And I didn't ask before, but what are you all like in terms of ride temperament? So are all of you willing to go on anything? Are I mean, you said you won't go on the teacups, but I feel yeah. like there's a lot of adults that won't go on the teacups. Um, <laughs> but w- what what are your thresholds in terms of of rides and what you what you all like? Yeah, so and and I I will go on the teacups, but I will sit there stationary mm-hmm. and not spin just for the nostalgia. But mm-hmm. um, I used to do absolutely everything, um, but with age came nausea. Um, especially those screen rides, like a star tours, that type of thing. Uh, Oh, I can't even think about it without feeling ill. Um, so now I have to sit a few of those out, Mm -hmm. but luckily like the kids have each other. And now that Max is tall enough, he's, he's ridden rides that I still haven't. Like he's done guardians a few times. Um, he does space. I can't do space. So, Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the kids will go on a few more than Phil and I will, and we will sit them out, which is, which is nice that they have each other to do that with. So we don't Mm -hmm. feel obliged. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a few that I can't do now. So we'll just wait it out while the, while the kids are on there. Okay. What about Tower of Terror since we're in Hollywood studios on this day? I can do it, but it's maybe a once per trip and I take like a, a, 
we have gravol here. I think it's like a Dramamine, like an mm -hmm. anti-nausea. Yeah. I will pop one of those beforehand and I'll be sitting there hoping for the least amount of drops. Um, but I still do it because I absolutely love the cue specifically. So mm -hmm. I want to go through and I want to, I, I love the ride. I wish I could still do that one. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I'll do that maybe once per trip. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Monday, August the 19th. Um, so that we have an animal kingdom day and then probably just a good amount of resting. And then we're going to do the extended evening hours at Epcot that night. So since you're staying at animal kingdom lodge and this is an animal kingdom lodge day, this feels like the right time to ask you, are you people who typically go back to the room for a break? Maybe not every day, but if you're certainly staying at a resort, that's very close to where you're going to be heading to yeah. into the parks that day. I would love to just stay, um, but it depends on everyone, right? So mm -hmm. especially with, with the kids, um, if they're kind of at each other, if they've had enough sun, if they're, you know. Mm -hmm. So now we will typically take a break, especially on days where, you know, the park maybe is open a bit later or we've gotten extended evening hours. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like you're missing out as much. Mm -hmm. um, so we will take breaks on those days for sure. But usually we end up taking a break, I should say. I just don't always want to, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you ever split up, though, as a group? Like if you wanted to stay and Phil wanted to go back for a break, would you would you do that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And there have been days where I'm up and I will go to a park for myself for a couple hours while they're kind of waking up and mm -hmm. – getting ready for the day. So mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. We will. Now that you have a 15 year old, do you or have you ever had a time when Jack and Max have gone off to do things by themselves? Um, not far. Jack, I will let him go solo and do a couple things because he's been so many times. I know he knows the park, like the back mm -hmm. of his hand. Yeah. Um, and he has a phone that I track. Um, and so I can see where he is. We can contact each other. Um, I haven't let them go too, too far by themselves just because they are still brothers and they will go at each other. The youngest might push some buttons and, or, you know, threaten to run off or some, I don't mm -hmm. know. So I just, I haven't trusted the youngest to be alone with his brother in that big of a crowd yet. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll go do rides and we'll sit and, you know, wait in a nearby store or restaurant or something. Right. Um, but not for any great length of time. Okay. All right. Tuesday, August the 20th. That is a resort day and then the Halloween party that night. Have you done the Halloween party before? Yes. And we love it. Have you done it in August before? Yeah. Yes. What does it feel like to do a <laughs> Halloween party in August? I mean, the trick-or-treating is pointless because it melts instantly and you mm -hmm. come home with a bag of like mushy chocolate. Um, it's just incredibly hot. Like we, mm -hmm. we love Halloween. We want to dress up, but uh, you're so limited. Like right. last, you know, last year we did stuff. We all wore tank tops and shorts and just kind of did a Disney bound mm -hmm. um, of Toy Story. And we're doing something similar this year. Um, dressing up as the Dalmatians, just literally wearing black and white, putting some polka dots and some ears and calling it a day because it's just so darn hot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uncomfortable. But mm. yeah. yeah, I have not made it to the <laughs> Halloween party yet myself. And I would really, really like to, but I, if I do go ever, it will need to not be in August or September. It's just, it's too much, and I want to be able to take advantage of things like trick-or-treating, although I recognize that trick-or-treating at a Halloween party is, you know, getting very expensive candy when you think about how much you pay for the ticket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the fact that you can just go down the street to the Target and get the same thing, but... I know. There is some novelty for us, though, because we don't have a lot of these treats in Canada, so... Oh, that's true. I didn't are... even think about that. Yeah, but yeah. you're you're right, absolutely. But it is uh, another little element of fun for the kids because we don't have a lot of those back home. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right, Wednesday, August the twenty first. Um, that I have uh, popping back over to Animal Kingdom for a bit, but mostly resort day and then the extended evening hours at Magic Kingdom. Okay. 
are the kids going to be there for all of the extended evening hours? Can they can they hang that late? Typically, yes. Um, as it happens this trip, I mean, we have like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with late things with the extended evening hours and Halloween parties and hopefully the Moonlight Magic. So that's a lot of late nights in a row. So okay. we'll see. Um, but typically, yeah, even the youngest, he'll stay out and we'll just try and sleep in or have, have naps. Mm -hmm. The goal doesn't always happen, but that's the goal. So yeah, typically he's been good. These are a lot of late nights in a row this trip, um, coupled with that heat. So, mm -hmm. so we'll see how we do. I mean, it's late nights for you and Phil too. Are you both night owls? Not, no, like <laughs> I'm good to be in bed by nine typically, but you, you've got that Disney adrenaline, right? right like you're just yeah. going and you can stay up late and then just up at the crack of dawn the next day excited. So, uh -huh. um, got that, that Disney adrenaline going. So yeah, hopefully that sees me through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thursday, August the 22nd. Um, we are back at Hollywood studios, um, for the day. And I think that's the day that I have, um, a reservation at 50s prime time. We only have like two table service this time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're taking the kids to 50s prime time that day for lunch and then spending the day at Hollywood Studios. Have you eaten at 50s prime time before? I have. When I went um, on a solo trip with my mom mm -hmm. this past February, her and I went there and we really enjoyed it. I know it's kind of hit and miss, um, but we, we really enjoyed it. And I think the kids would get a kick out of it. So mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I love 50s prime time. I think that the the atmosphere is cool, but the food is also good. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It ticks both boxes. All right. Friday, August the 23rd. Um, so this is our checkout day. So we are okay. checking out of Animal Kingdom Lodge and uh doing the the rhino up close with rhinos. Oh, so okay. we're doing that tour at Animal mm -hmm. Kingdom. Um that was very hard to get. So I, I heard that that's toughest tour to get because it's the smallest group of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I literally, when my 60 day window opened up, I was trying to get it on the Saturday, the Sunday. Like I went through literally every single day until mm -hmm. I finally found this one. So not ideal. It's at like 11 in the morning. So as we're trying to check out of one resort and switch over is when our tour is, but it's literally all I could get. So um, we're going to do that one, which I am excited for. I've done a few tours mm -hmm. now at Animal Kingdom and I love them. So whole family's doing that one at 11. It's a pretty short tour. Then we'll probably grab some lunch and then head over to, to the poly from there and just chill out at the resort for the rest of the night. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. I desperately tried to get up close with rhinos uh, last year and I was not able to get it. So you, you're right. It's, yeah. it's pretty hard to get. Um, yeah. So if, if anybody out there is trying to plan one of the Animal Kingdom tours, I recommend that you really plan ahead and leave space for it towards the end of your trip because getting it within the first couple of days of your trip can sometimes be a challenge. For sure. All right. Saturday, August the 24th. Um, so this is probably primarily a resort day, our first full day at the Poly. Um, but we've also written down that we might pop into Magic Kingdom just being so close and it's our favorite park. Um, but it is primarily a resort day with the possibility of visiting Magic Kingdom. Okay. Sunday, August the 25th. We have nothing on that day. So um, that's the one day that's kind of up in the air. So we'll see. We, at this point, haven't had a full day at Epcot yet. We've only mm -hmm. been doing um, the extended evening hours. So my thought is that we will probably pop into Epcot for a little bit that day. Okay. Do you ever do anything off Disney property, like go to the character warehouse or hit up any other sites around Orlando? Um, we used to. So many years ago, we would stay with my grandparents who were snowbirds and lived a bit closer to Tampa. Mm -hmm. um, and we would we would use their car and we would drive into Disney for a few days. And then we would do we went to Legoland and Bush Gardens and the character warehouse, a few places like that. Um, we don't typically anymore. Um, we we'll usually just stay, stay in the bubble and do mm -hmm. a few things. Um, that, so that's probably what we're going to do. We might also use that day for Disney Springs, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we haven't rented a car in ages or left, <laughs> left the little bubble in a while. Mm -hmm. So, well, the good thing about the outlets is it does not require renting a car necessarily because it's close enough that the Lyft or Uber ride is pretty 
simple and not very expensive oh, okay. um, to go over That's there. I, I wish I could remember how much it was, but I want to say like ten dollars or something oh wow yeah okay. not not bad at all um yeah so um all right monday august the 26th um so we have brunch at ohana that day and then um extended evening hours at epcot mm-hmm. and that's the only the only solid plans we have on the, the schedule for that day so i don't know if it'll be another resort day or if we'll pop over somewhere um again really nice that we all have have the passes this time and have that flexibility Mm -hmm. um so yeah so those are the only two things on the agenda for that day so far all right tuesday august the 27th um we are hanging out with some some friends that day manhattan to main street is uh flying in sashi and 40 are coming in so we hope to connect with them and have a resort day with them and then um i am hoping to get the dvc moonlight magic that evening so that goes live this week so fingers crossed um and that one's at hollywood studios so that's the the plan for that day oh i'm so jealous that you get to meet up with sashi and 40 in disney yeah (laughs) wednesday august the 28th um that we have nothing again um planned other than the extended evening hours at magic kingdom so we'll probably i imagine spend uh some time at Magic Kingdom during the day as well, and then stick around for the extended evening hours. Mm-hmm. I love those extended evening hours. Totally worth it because you can get so much done without the crowds. Oh, yeah. Like we've – after hours parties are our favorite things. And, I mean, they don't have them this time of year because of the Halloween party. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the extended evening hours have been great. Thursday, August the 29th is sadly your departure day. Mm-hmm. What time of the day are you leaving? And if you have uh, not, if it's not until later in the day, what are your plans for your departure day? Um, so I believe our flight is around two o'clock that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, being considered an international flight, they like a surrogate three hours prior. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't give us a ton of time in the morning for leaving the resort around 10 ish. So we will very likely just pack up maybe take our time um, having breakfast, wander around the resort one more time, and then head over to the airport. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to pop over to Magic Kingdom one more time just to Mm -hmm. say bye quickly since we're so close. Have a morning Um, coffee. Exactly. Yeah, with the castle. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I'm thinking I will probably do. But uh, realistically, just a lot of packing up and getting everyone organized and ready to head to the airport. Um, For getting from the airport to your resort and going back on this departure day, what is your travel plan? Um, So we, we've tried a few things. Um, Again, team fast pass. I also miss the magic express, Um, (laughs) but I digress. We, we took mirrors um, one time and they were great. Mm -hmm. Um, But the last couple of times I've taken an Uber or Lyft, Mm -hmm. it's just, when I when we got on the mirrors, we were it never fails. Wherever we stay, we seem to be the last stop. Mm-hmm. So when we're getting in, particularly late at night with the kids, we have to stop at all these other Orlando hotels before finally getting. And you just want to get to the resort, right? Um, so it's about the same, if not less, um, cost wise to take an Uber or a Lyft for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've just been doing that, and it's it's been so much better so far. Okay. Considering that you're staying at DVC uh, resorts, what room type are you in at each resort? Um, So we are trying to spread out the points, um, having burned through them really quickly. This time we're just doing a standard room at Kidani Mm -hmm. um, and same with, same with Polly. So we did uh, the safari view or Savannah View, Savannah rather, View. Safari. Mm-hmm. Savannah, Savannah View in April, and that was amazing. I absolutely love that. Um, didn't have enough points left this time, so mm-hmm. we're, we're staying standard at Kadani and then a standard at, at Polly as well. Is it a studio, a one-bedroom, a two-bedroom? Uh, just a studio. Okay, so since you've stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge in a Savannah View before, I mean, I'm sure it's amazing to look out and see the animals there. How much time did you realistically on that that trip sit around on your balcony watching animals I did so I think I forget what it was maybe two or three point difference to Mm -hmm. for that um definitely worth it 
I I would wake up and and go out and sit and watch the animals. The boys would come out. We'd be sitting on the bed like watching Mickey cartoons, and in our peripheral we would see like a giraffe wander by. Um, it was it was amazing. And then when we came back for afternoon break, we would sit out and watch them. And in the evening, until it got dark, and even when it was dark, you could hear them, um, which was hmm. which was kind of funny. But you couldn't necessarily see them. So I did spend a lot of time out there. We'd bring our breakfast. We always order groceries. Um, so we would just bring our, our breakfast out and we would sit and watch the animals. And we were lucky. We were right in front of a spot where there was a feeding. There was something on the tree where they would come and, and eat. So it was a really good spot for that. Yeah, I was I was sort of looking at Animal Kingdom Lodge for our upcoming February trip. But we have a couple other places we wanted to stay before that. So I didn't end up going for it but it was on my list of like oh if I can't get this then I'll go here and I was uh, I was like I feel like I have to have a savanna view the first time I stay there just to you know really experience everything that Animal Kingdom Lodge has to offer but um, I imagine once you've done it then then maybe it, it won't be as high a priority to to stay in savanna view if you want to save points because yeah it does make a difference yeah. No, for sure. And definitely, you know, trying to save points, but I'm, I'm so glad I did it. It was mm-hmm. worth it in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I, I, we stayed at Kidani. We're staying at Kidani again. We visited Jumbo House. Mm-hmm. Um, it looked much, much busier mm-hmm. over there. Um, so Kidani was lovely, except the walk um, <laughs> to our room mm-hmm. from the lobby. It felt like forever. We timed it. It was eight minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, That's an a eight long minute walk. walk. Yeah, from the lobby to our room. That's probably it, a half a mile. <laughs> yeah, it was, that's, you know, we got a good amount of steps in before we'd even started our day, just getting mm-hmm. out to the lobby. But um, but it was good. I mean, we were very far out, so there seemed to be a lot of animals. So that part of it was good, but mm-hmm. um, a lot of a lot of walking there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that I've heard about Kidani specifically. And it makes me think if I ever stay in Kidani, I might consider renting a car. Just because yeah. you can pull in and park right under your rooms there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, this this sounds like a, an amazing trip. It's a nice long trip. I, I'm mm-hmm. guessing you're probably going to have to do some laundry at some point during this trip unless you're packing yeah. for that many days, which <laughs> <No>. <laughs> in the high heat of August, like well, that would be a lot of clothes because it is. There will uh, be. Three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um so hopefully you'll have access to the DVC laundry fairly close mm-hmm. to your room. At, at Polly, you should not be too far from it for sure. I don't know where it is in Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yeah, we did find it last time when we were exploring and made mm-hmm. a mental note for for August. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And everybody says like, why would you want to do laundry on vacation? But I have to say that it will a it helps with your packing, but b mm-hmm. there is something that really makes you feel like I live here. This is this yeah. is my home. If you're doing something as mundane as laundry one evening, and right. you know it, it gives you an excuse to kind of just chill for a couple hours. Like I did no, laundry, exactly. and I I got a drink from the bar. <laughs> I read my book. And yeah, and yeah, that's nice. the thing, right? You throw it in and go mm-hmm. do something else, mm-hmm. and come back. Yeah, it, it's perfect. Like on a resort day, it's it's yeah, yeah, it needs to be done in August. That's for sure. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Krista, this has been so much fun chatting with you. I can't wait to chat with you after your trip is over, and hear how it all went. I hope you have all the luck with the weather and that you get into moonlight magic. I'm crossing my fingers for you as someone who's never gotten to go to a moonlight magic because it was never coincided with a trip. I want to live vicariously through you and hear how it is, (laughs) but I hope you have the best time. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you to Krista for joining me on the podcast. Listeners, please make sure that you head over to Instagram and give Krista a follow if you aren't following her already. The link is in the show notes and she's Canucks Who Disney or her backup account, Canucks That Disney. (laughs) That is all for today. I hope everyone has a magical week and don't forget to keep daydreaming about where you long to be. (laughs) 